ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shrimad Bhagavatam Canto 7 Chapter 3 Hiranyakashipu's plan to become immortal text number 23 to begin with Satat Satat ki chakra vami kai kant ami kat sahat oja बलाविधानो राजनो युवा उठिथस्थाप्त हे मो विभावसुर इवाय दशा सथाथी चक्का राजसम हानो युवा उथिस्थाप्त हेम भो विभावसुर इवा राजो <laughs> राजसमहानो युवा हेम भो इवसोरी वाय सुसाथिखाखा सहाय संभानो राजसमहानो युवा उथिथस्थाप्त हेम भो इवसोरी वाय दशा सहाजला सभानो राजसमहानो युवा इथिथस्थाप्त हेम भो इवसोरी वाय दशा सिरण्यकाशिपु थैट from the ant hill and bamboo grove saha mental strength oja strength of the senses bala and sufficient bali strength anvitaha endowed with sarva all avayava the limbs of the body 
Sampana, fully restored. Rajra Samhanana, having a body as strong as a thunderbolt. Yuva, young. Udhita, arisen. Tapta Hema Adva Abda, whose bodily luster became like molten gold. Vibhavasu, fire, eva, like, edasa, from fuel wood. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. As soon as He was sprinkled with water from Lord Brahma's water pot, Hiranyakashipu arose endowed with a full body with limbs so strong that they could bear the striking of a thunderbolt. With physical strength and a bodily luster resembling molten gold, he emerged from the anthill a completely young man, just as fire springs from fuel wood. Purport. Hiranyakashipu was revitalized so much so that his body was quite competent to tolerate the striking of thunderbolts. He was now a young man with a strong body and a very beautiful bodily luster resembling molten gold. This was a rejuvenation that took place because of his severe austerity and penance. Text number 24. Seeing Lord Brahma present before him in the sky, carried by his swan airplane, Haranyakashipu was extremely pleased immediately fell flat on his head on the ground, began to express his obligation to the Lord. Purport. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 9.23-24, Ye pyanya devata bhakta, ejante shwarayan vita, te pimam eva konteya, ejantya vidi purvakam, ahami sarva jagnanam, okta cha prabhur eva cha, Itumam abhijananti tadvena tashtriyantite. Whatever a man may sacrifice to other gods, O son of Kunti, is really meant for me alone, but is offered without true understanding. I am the only enjoyer and the only object of sacrifice. Those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. In effect, Krishna says, Persons engaged in the worship of demigods are not very intelligent. Although such worship is indirectly offered to me, for example, when a man pours water on the leaves and branches of a tree without pouring water on the root, he does so without sufficient knowledge, without observing regulative principles. The process of watering a tree is to pour water on the root. Similarly, the process of rendering service to the different parts of the body is to supply food to the stomach. The demigods are, so to speak, different officers and directors in the government of the Supreme Lord. One has to follow the laws made by the government, not by the officers or directors. Similarly, everyone is to offer his worship to the Supreme Lord only. That will automatically satisfy the different officers and directors of the law. The officers and directors are engaged as representatives of the government and to offer some bribe to the officers and directors is illegal. This is stated in the Bhagavad Gita as avidi purvakam. In other words, Krishna does not approve the unnecessary worship of the demigods. In Bhagavad Gita is clearly stated that there are many types of yagyas, performances recommended in the Vedic literatures, but actually all of them are meant for satisfying the Supreme Lord. Yaga means Vishnu. In the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, it's clearly stated that one should work only for the satisfying Yagya or Vishnu. The perfectional form of human civilization, known as Varnashram Dharma, is specifically meant for satisfying Vishnu. Therefore, Krishna says, I am the enjoyer of all sacrifices, 
because I am the Supreme Master. However, less intelligent persons, without knowing this fact, worship demigods for temporary benefit. Therefore, they fall down to material existence, do not desire the desire, achieve the desired goal of life. If, however, anyone has any material desire to be fulfilled, he had better pray for it to the Supreme Lord, although that is not pure devotion. He will thus achieve the desired result. Although Harani Kashipu offered his obeisances to, unto Lord Brahma, he was strongly inimical towards Lord Vishnu. This is a symptom of an asura. Asura is worship of the demigods as being separate from the Lord, not knowing that all the demigods are powerful because of being servants of the Lord. If the Supreme Lord were to withdraw the powers of the demigods, the demigods would no longer be able to offer benedictions to their worshippers. The difference between the dev a devotee and a non-devotee, or a sura, is that the devotee knows that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that everyone derives power from him. Without worshipping the demigods for particular powers, a devotee worships Lord Vishnu, knowing that if he desires a particular power, he can get that power without acting as Lord Vishnu's devotee while acting as Lord Vishnu's devotee. Therefore, in the Shastras it is recommended, Akama Sarva Karma Va, Moksha Karma Kama Udharadi, Tivreni Tivrena Bhakti Yogena, Yajeta Purusham Param. Person who has broader intelligence, whether he be full of material desires, free from material desires, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the Supreme Whole, the Personality of Godhead. Even if a person has material desires, instead of worshiping the demigods, he should pray to the Supreme Lord so that his connection with the Supreme Lord will be established and will be saved from becoming a demon or a non-devotee. Non In this regard, Srila Madhvachari gives the following quotation from the Brahma Tarka. Eka sta naika Karyatvad Vishnu Pradanyatas Tata Jivasya Tad Abhinatvan Na Bina Di Kritam Vachaha. Since the Vishnu is the Supreme, by worshipping Vishnu one can fulfill all desires. There is no need to divert one's attention to any demigod. Mom Vishnu Braya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutta Shri Mate Bhakti Viranta Swanita Namane Namaste Sarasatunde Ve Gauravani Pacharane Nirvi Shesha Shri Vadi Paskatya De Satarna Yatatara Mulu Nasechane Na Tripyanti Tatskanda Bhujo Pushaka Pranaharachcha Yatendrianam Tataiva Sarvahanam Atu Teja this is one of the most basic principles of our philosophy, that if you water the root of the tree, itatara mula isechanena, triptyanti tatskana bujo pushaka, then the water goes naturally to all the leaves and branches. Or by supplying food to the stomach, itendriyanam, then all the different parts of the body are satisfied. Tataiva sarvahanam atuteja, or if one worships Achuta, Krishna, then actually not only the demigods are satisfied, but all of the entities are satisfied. Prabhupada gives many examples of this. If the finger wants to enjoy the food, it's very difficult. And they squash the food in many different ways, smear the food over its body, but this does not help in the enjoyment of the food. The service of, this, of the fingers is not to smear themselves with the food, it is to supply the food, put it into the mouth, and it goes into the stomach. And when the stomach is satisfied, then all the different parts of the body are also satisfied. So the only mistake is that we think that we're independent of the Supreme Lord and that we can be happy without him. Although he's the source of all enjoyment, 
He's the source of all transcendental pleasure. He's the source of everything, including all pleasure. Therefore, lacking Krishna's happiness, experiencing Krishna's happiness, no one could actually become happy. Still, there's an attempt. The senses, vacha vegam, manasakrota vegam, jiva vegam, udrapasa vegam, they're demanding so many things. And when we satisfy those demands, then we think that's happiness. When the misery of the demands is taken away, then we think we're actually happy, we're satisfied. Just like no one feels great happiness because their finger is not broken. No one runs down the street saying, my finger is not broken, my finger is not broken. Look at my finger, isn't it? Isn't it? it looks happy. But when your finger is broken, then there's a lot of distress. And finally, when they, the finger is cured, then you say, oh, I feel so good. Actually, you don't feel good. You just don't feel the pain that you were feeling before. That's called good. So in the absence of misery, of the pushing of the senses and the mind, then the living entity feels peaceful temporarily, and he calls that happiness. Of course, there may be some happiness from sense pleasure, but yehi sam sparshita boga dukkha yone evate adyante vante kontiya nate shu ramate buddha. An intelligent person doesn't take part in the sources of misery, but you do to contact with the senses, with their objects, o son of kunti, such pleasures. They have a beginning and they also have an end. And so the wise person, he doesn't delight in such things. In other words, for the temporary happiness, if one has to sat- endure so much misery, then it's not an Great austerity. Piece of paper. They satisfy some superior, a boss, a movie star, a rock star, an athlete. And they go to their work. And they work hard in order to get some piece of paper, which they think is a benediction. Oh, you're so kind. You gave me this job. You benedicted me. Or they go to the bank. The bank has become the modern day church. And instead of praying for bread in the church, they go to the bank and fold their hands, say, please give me a loan. I'm your dog. I'll work for you the rest of my life. Just throw me a bone. So they get a piece of paper and they think it has some value. Of course, it's just a piece of paper. It's not even edible paper. In some countries, you can't even burn the paper to keep warm when it becomes useless. And yet people will sacrifice their whole time and energy with the hope that this piece of paper will protect them and make them happy because they can buy something with it. Of course... In Germany, when they had inflation, people used to, in order to get a loaf of bread, they used to have to fill it up with the money and bring it to the store. They didn't worry about people stealing the money when they went to the store. They worried about people stealing the wheelbarrow. (laughs) It's just... So Hiranyakachipu will achieve this great benediction. He'll get this very strong body, Mr. Universe. Even the demigods, his Indra could not pierce his body with their thunderbolt, which is the strongest weapon in the universe. 
But still, we can see it was a waste of time. Because he was in anxiety all the time. And no one can be secure that they're eternal in this material world, even if they get all the benedictions of the demigods. Because even the demigods are temporary. And everything in the material world is temporary. As we can see, there's nothing the same. At every moment, everything's changing. And it never comes back to be the same again. And therefore, there's no, the only, there's no security in the material world. There's only insecurity. And anyone who's feeling themselves secure in the material world is either crazy or they're stupid or a combination of both. Anyone who feels himself to be well protected in the material world is obviously insane because there's no one in the material world who can actually protect one except for Krishna and Krishna will only protect one ultimately on the spiritual platform. Only when one comes to the spiritual platform and is protected by illusion, from illusion, is one actually protected because there is no protection in the material world. Whatever we have either today or tomorrow we have to lose. And whatever we get in the future, we're going to lose also. And only a, sa- a sane person understands you can't really lose anything that you never had. Since we never really possess anything in the material world, we're only imagining that we're the pre- owners and the controllers. Therefore, we're always in the illusion that we might lose something. But actually, we don't lose anything because you can't lose a- a- something you never had. The general analogy is if you go to the bank and you tell the bank, like I went to the Gorensky Go- 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 Bank yesterday, and I didn't walk in and say, oh, all right, you can have it all back. You can have all the money here. I renounce it. It's tomorrow's Nishinga Dave's appearance day, and I know Haranikashipu, he worked hard to get some benediction and it was all lost. So, all right, I got all, I had all this money in the bank and I give it all back to you. No one's going to be very impressed because no one believes I had the money in the bank. Similarly, people are claiming that the proprietors are so many things, but actually it's all being directed by Krishna at every moment. All we can do is desire and Krishna is fulfilling our Illusory desires by, uh, by having the material nature arrange itself in so many different ways in which we actually believe that we're gaining and losing in the material world. But the only thing we can gain is spiritual knowledge and the only thing we actually lost is our identity, our real identity. That we've lost and everything else that we think we've gained is just a, a mental concoction. It's just an idea but it's not a reality. Because ultimately, Krishna is always the controller, he's always the proprietor, and he doesn't give anything to anyone in the material world except for the idea that they're actually the proprietor or the controller. But he, Krishna comes in order to give real knowledge, and that's done by aligning our desires with that of Krishna's, and that's called yagya. And anyone who performs yagya, they gradually become free from material illusion they're called suras, and anyone who doesn't perform yagya, who doesn't align their desires with that of Krishna's, they're called as suras, and asram yonim apanam muda janmani janmani tanaham dvishita kuran samsareshu naradamam shi pramya jasram ashubam asri shveva yonishu. That those who are envious and mischievous and who are the lowest among mankind I cast into the various demoniac species of life. So they, they say that man has evolved from apes. They don't realize that most people are about to become apes. If they think man has become evolved from apes, that actually men come back to apes. Asram yona apana muda janmani janmani mama prapyaiva kontiya tato yadantaman gatim yadamam gatim. Obtaining such demonic species of life, they gradually sink down to the most abominable type of existence. So it sounds like Krishna is not very friendly to people. Anyone who doesn't like him, he doesn't like them. 
and he just pushes them down and down and down until they become the lowest species of life. You rascal, I'm pushing you down. You No, 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 that's too bad. You don't like me, I don't like you. <laughs> Have anything else to say about me? Yeah. <laughs> There are three gates leading to hell, lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should become free from these three gates because they lead to the degradation of the self. So it's glorified in the modern world as progress, namely progressing in lust, fulfilling our lusty desires, especially for economic development, for sense gratification. And when our lusty desires are fulfilled and we can get all the paraphernalia we need for our sense gratification, then we become greedy to get more and more, compete with others, cheat others, in order to get their things. Give and take. It's called give and take. You give to me and I take from you. It's called give and take in the modern world. You give to me, and I take from you. And when we can't fulfill our desires, when we're frustrated, when someone else comes along, then we become angry, and we say it's all unfair. Conspiracy goes all again. All this money I give you. Let us. Everyone is trying. Honor among thieves. So we stole it from is Krishna. As soon as that thought of stealing, guitar, the Maya slaps us, it's a concept of life. So anyone who has a body, they must be an anxiety. We have to die. You become our term and goes with everything. 
think some germs snuck in and killed him. Viruses and parasites. And then there are. So what are you going to? Yeah. Dave, that there's no. Trying to kill. But ultimately, the real enemy is the fact that we're not suffering the of material existence. Demigods, which are comparatively insignificant. Therefore, a tanya pi, let's see, a tanya a tanya pi, a tanya pi, a mukta kantiya tamodra, a Achara, who performs act, actions or activities which organization and gradually the what is oh it's that anyone who gives sure and acts whimsically is the supreme destination. Tasma Shastram Shastram Vidanokta Karma Karma Iharasi. Knowing such rules and regulations, you become purified. Therefore, is actually what we should call rather than a demigod. Rather than trying to some temporary benediction from others, we should shelter of Krishna, his instructions in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and that way gradually become purified, ultimately gain, which is gain of transcendental realization or Krishna consciousness. Without that gain, everything else is shrama and he gave alum time. Haranyakashipu, that for us, in spite of control of the whole universe, it couldn't help him at the time of death. Any questions? the honest thieves so if there are any thieves who already stole should they give that money to Krishna what is in, uh, in that money well Lujacharya was trying to didn't want to give a donation especially the wealthy people so he got together a group of thieves with mystic power and one of the things to walls boat and kill them all. <laughs> Jai. <laughs> <laughs> well, they definitely got some. Benefit from 
providing Lakshmi for building a temple. Sri Ranga is at the temple? Yes. So. Oh, one of y'all. Oh, okay. So he had a good, he had a lot of associates. One of the others? Uh, Madura Kavi? Oh, okay. And uh, do you have any advice for thieves who want to serve Krishna on how to engage their stealing propensity in Krishna's service? Try to steal Krishna's heart. <laughs> like the thief who heard that if he goes to Vrindavan, there's a boy there, he heard in one lecture, his, his body is covered with jewels. So he, he became determined, I'm gonna to go to Vrindavan, find that boy and steal all his jewels. So he was, went to Vrindavan, looked all, everywhere for Krishna in great anxiety. He was such anxiety that Krishna appeared before him. And the thief said, give me your jewels. And Krishna said, no, Mother Jasoda will be angry if I give you these jewels. So there's a big argument and then the thief fell in love with Krishna. He said, no, no, you can keep your jewels. It's all right. And Krishna said, no, no, you can take the jewels now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's many instances of thieves. The thief that Lord Nityananda covered himself with jewels and gold, silk, and he was doing Harinam. And one, man, one head thief saw that. And he decided, I'm gonna, this is where we're gonna go, and we're gonna go to his house and steal everything he has. So there's a whole story, I won't tell the whole story of how we, him and his dicoids, they, at night, before they pl wanted to plunder Lord Nityananda, they worshiped Goddess Durga, they offered meat and wine and sacrifice, they dressed themselves, and then they went to steal, well, when they went to steal, then they found themselves first in a position where they saw that surrounding the cottage of Lord Nityananda was very strong, powerful uh, guards. And e any one of them, each one of them could have easily defeated all the band of, of thieves. So they decided, well, let's come back in a better night. So again, they did the same ritual in another time. And when they went to steal from Lord Nityananda and his associates, then suddenly they all became blinded. And when they became blinded, they fell into a pit full of scorpions. Others fell into places which were uh, thorny bushes and they were screaming in, in, in agony. Indra came and sent torrents of rain and ice. And they were freezing and, and suffering like anything. And the head thief realized that actually this Avaduta Nityananda, he must be God, and therefore he had committed a great offense. So he came, he came into the house of Lord Nityananda, paying obeisances, and Lord Nityananda came. Eventually he gave him his, all his mercy, and he became a pure devotee and went out to preach amongst all the other thieves to worship Lord Nityananda also. So if you're a thief, then get Lord Nityananda's mercy, and then you can preach to all the other thieves and bring them to Lord Nityananda also. Yes. Hare Krishna. And this verse mentions a Saha, Oja, and Bala. Sometimes you also have, a, have, a, have Prana thrown in. These uh, seem to be explained in Ayurveda as different types of energy. Uh, and sometimes it's not quite clear why we have so many different types of energy described. Do, do you have some uh, uh, explanation about these uh, Saha, Oja, and Bala? I heard that Oja is immune, immu the immunity of, uh, of a person. Well, there's always three energies. Krishna is that impersonal. Everything is derived from bliss, knowledge, and eternity. So either they're directly or indirectly coming from those energies, everything. So for eternity, uh, from bliss, we get ojas. Is a, from pleasure, is ojas is the source of that. From the energy of, of knowledge, we have pitta, or here agni, or whatever. 
Tejas. And from the energy of eternity, we get the energy of Vata, which is the energy of activity, or Vata is, it's, is Vayu, existence. So those three energies are the source of all the other energies, either directly or indirectly. It's very interesting, thank you. So then uh, for depression, one would need to improve one's ojas condition. Yeah, it's meditative. Ojas is, is achieved by two, th- two ways. One is by digestion of food, and the other is by meditating on Vishnu, Krishna. Spiritual thoughts will produce ojas, and eating prasadam with love and devotion and digesting it will also produce ojas. And uh, exercise uh, will influence which of those? Exercise will help you digest food. Uh-huh. Because food, food is that which you can digest, according to Ayurveda. Medicine is that which helps you digest. And poison is that which you can digest. So, exercise helps you digestion. Yes. Um, also, in this purport, we had um, some, that in, at the end, it was it said that by worshiping Vishnu, one can fulfill all one's desires. There's no need to divert one's attention to any demigod. But also in the Nectar of Devotion, uh, it says we should uh, offer respect to Ganapati, Ganesh, to remove obstacles. In, in the Bhagavatam, Krishna says, don't worship me be, uh, until you offered respects to Durga and uh, Brahma. So... Um, well, Bharat Maharaj, for he worshiped the demigods, but he worshiped And then it says, uh, <laughs> there's no breakfast anyway. <laughs> um, that by worshipping Vi- Vishnu, one can fulfill all one's desires. And throughout this purpose, Prabhupada was speaking that it's not intelligent to turn to anybody else for any other desires. But as devotees, uh, our, de- uh, our devotees... Uh, what are devotees supposed to do with their desires? Should they suppress them, uh, circumvent them, or offer to Krishna, pray to Krishna? For Desires? Well, we have desires. Therefore, Krishna supplies prasadam to us when it's not a fast day. We, we have a desire to go to sleep, and generally Krishna gives us some place where we can rest our body. So these desires are bona fide desires, and Krishna fulfills them. Otherwise... And for the devotees, they have to work usually less than others to fulfill those desires. As far as desires to become Haranyakashipu, Krishna generally doesn't fulfill that desire. So therefore, as a matter of fact, he tries to take those desires away. But bona fide desires, Krishna helps fulfill if they're bona fide. Any other th- question? Yes. Uh, before we were speaking about uh, thieves, I've heard uh, one lecture uh, from Shiva Prabhupada where he's saying that some people question the, the ways in which uh, uh, my disciple, uh, I think Guru Kripa, uh, uh, Prabhu does, uh, brings in money, but he then very fiercely stood up uh, for him and ha- he said that he has his full support, uh, whatever he does, because anyway, anybody, everybody is a thief uh, here. So he was like uh, not worrying too much about how Guru Kripa gets his money. He was that was well. I'd have to see the lecture. Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I d- I don't remember him probably exactly saying that.
Anyway, so in the in the sixteen eighties we have the industrial revolution. Okay, but I don't know. Probably just praising him for being a thief. No, no, no. He was like standing up for him. Yeah, of course he was standing up for him. What was he going to do? I remember he was bringing up the topic himself during the lecture because he was obviously kind of Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure probably would appreciate his his effort, but exactly what context it was in, I don't know. All right. Thank you very much. Grantharai Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai Shilaprabhupad Kijai Gaur Pimanande.